And we're back to the career build series episode two. So we're right where we left off last time. We're here at the uh, military base in Proteus. So uh, last time, just a little reminder, we uh, ferried some fuel with the uh, Krennel plan over to FJ Warner docks to give us some fuel to put in Proteus. And then if we'll bring up the map here. And we went from, let's see, we went from down here at FJ Warner. And we flew up to the military base. Uh, I tried doing the instrument approach. I could have done the instrument approach. I just, um, you know, was a little bit occupied with uh, flying. And so I could have used just the numbers off of the bearing two panel to do the approach. But um, I really need a needle at some point. So we're going to do a little build in this video. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a couple things in Proteus, getting that more set up for actually um, being more usable in game. What's this mission? Riverboat has an emergency. Ooh, that's an interesting one. All right, so let's uh, try to plan on doing that once we get settled. I will try to take Proteus in here and land somewhere in here. That would be cool. So let's go ahead and we have to recall Proteus into the base, into the bench here. So I did find out I can launch Proteus out of this hangar. So uh, last video went in and just, um, you know, selected the workbench. So let's go ahead and taxi Proteus in. Um, I do have reverse thrust. I could reverse thrust. I, I'm trying to think. I'm I'm going to redo the way the props work. I'm going to make them more realistic, and I'm probably going to end. I might end up getting rid of the thrust reversers. I'm not sure. I have to decide how I want to do that first. I could set the throttles so that they can go negative only one on the ground, but I haven't really uh, decided that yet. How I want to do that. So, um, you know, some items that need to come in on this upper deck are going to be um, some seating, some medical stuff. Pretty much a lot of the stuff that's on um, Sibley is coming into Proteus, which is nice because essentially the top of Proteus is Sibley's hull, is uh, fuselage. So that should be pretty easy actually to port that in. So let's go ahead and get started here. So we'll do Master Power Avionics. Um, I'm going to do my inboards for, for uh, getting in there. So let's just do engine two start couple things to fix on these as well and we'll do engine 3 start and we'll check the RPMs, RPMs good, props and temps. So let's go ahead and I'm going to try to set up my uh, let's go ahead and re release the brake, let's go ahead and put these props into reverse I'm just going to tap the manual brakes here that's that new click for the throttle that I hate um, I don't know why the devs did that Throttles are silent, devs. Uh, let's see, can I get these props in reverse? I might have not put them uh, reversible at the moment. Let me try to manually do it. Uh, what do we have, two? Yeah, so I don't think I, I don't, don't think I set them up for reverse. I, I've been t uh, thinking back and forth whether I was gonna uh, let them go in reverse anyway. So let's go ahead and we'll just taxi up. So let's go ahead and we will grab uh, three. And we're going to increase the uh, props here. What's three prop? What's three doing? Okay, they're out of sync now. I need to sync them up. So if I come all the way down on them, I'll get them synced. And then I can come up. And uh, they'll come up. So. And so now I'm just I'm using asymmetrical thrust. That's me going over the lip of the taxiway. So as you can see, by using asymmetrical thrust, notice my left tire is not moving at all. Notice how I'm moving this in place. That's the benefit of having a um, full caster tail wheel and the ability of um, having asymmetrical thrust. Now I want to come down on both engines. As you can see, so this is beneficial for having a very large aircraft like this. I can still uh, maneuver it very uh, precisely and in tight spaces. So that's that's the benefit of, of using asymmetrical thrust and why I set it up that way is you can even something this huge and having it, you know, you can uh, do that. We had a setting on the Embraer 145 where we could disconnect the nose wheel and so essentially you disconnect the hydraulic system from the nose wheel and you can, uh, it, the nose wheel would spin 360 degrees and that way, when they were pushing you out with a tug, 
um, they could push beyond um, they could push beyond 90 degrees. So right now I'm just kind of coasting on that uh, lip there. Once I get straightened out here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and we'll, we'll uh, taxi it in the rest of the way. So Proteus is coming along really well here. Um, I, I'm going to need asymmet asymmetry to get this in there. So that lip caught me up. That's going to be a mess. So I just need to get this close enough to recall it. It's going to be a pain to get it in there probably um, because of that lip. All right, let's go ahead and put the brake on and bring my thrust back. I'm going to see if it's close enough. Why is my thrust not working here? Up, oh, I'm out of seat. Try not to hit that propeller. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Kill I'm going to kill three if I can reach it there. I don't want three to, uh, I don't want to blow the prop off three. I do have, I think I have damage on. Vehicle damage was not on, but it is now. I'm just going to zoom down to the uh, workbench. Hopefully we're close enough to grab it. Uh, no. All right. So I, I need to add, um, initially I had a set of regular wheels here on the tail, and that allowed me to have a connector for towing. I think I might put the connector up here. I haven't decided. Um, or something else. I need some way to tow this. So um, I thought I had hooked up the thrust reverse. Let me, let me see what is up with this thrust reverse. So, uh, prop it's it's prop pitch reverse really is what it is you know you know you didn't you never really reverse in the thrust you're reversing the flow of the thrust essentially so let's uh let's do damage off for now I'll uh, kick three back on all right and let's see if I can't get these in reverse I thought I had set them so they would go in reverse but uh, I have to get out and check that was uh that was the tire getting stuck on this lip and it was causing me to slide this way instead of going up and over it so you know I just kind of need to stick on the taxiway is what I need to do but so I don't think these are reversing uh, these props here can I get a reading on the prop or are you gonna just be daft and not let me read it so oh I do have player damage on so let's not do that that's stupid okay this one, I might be able to step out on the prop. I'm trying to see why I'm getting not getting tool tips in the propeller, but definitely does not look like I'm getting um, reverse. So I think I will put reverse thrust in. I, I have to figure out how I want to set it up, though. So I'm not getting reverse thrust, it appears. Let me go back some more. Let's take off the brake. I'm going to power up, see if it give it to me. I'm really digging the new engine sound on this so far. I'll have to play with them some more to see if uh, how I like them. But all right, so I was hoping if this all set up for um, let's see. All right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna screw around with this too much. I'm just gonna recall it. Uh, the other thing I meant to check, which I didn't, was uh, fuel usage. Um. Let me see if it has the fuel. We didn't use a lot of fuel to go out. I know that for a fact. I, I checked it uh, quickly. Okay, so that's there. You know, I can go back into the videos and check. What? Uh-oh. That, that caused us to lose all our fuel. All right, so we're not going to do that. Let's do this. Um, all right, so let's do this. Uh, what I'm going to do here is this. Let's load up the save again. I want to check the fuel. So that's interesting. If I recall the vehicle back to the bench that way, I'm not getting my fuel saved. So if I'm not physically putting it back, I thought that might physically put the fuel back on the bench. It's not. So that's good to know because if... Uh, if you do that, you're going to lose the fuel that's in your vehicle. So here it is. Um, where are we at here? Override time. Again, we did some nights, so we're going to do days. This can come off. Let's go ahead and jump in here, and I'll, I'll do a better job of taxing in this time. 
So uh, fuel is 8,753 pounds, 82. So let's do some quick calcs here. So what are we talking I think they're, what, 82 apiece. So 8,200 times 2. That's easy. That's 16. Uh, 16 and 400. So 16,400. Uh, 6,400 pounds. What do we start with? I think we started with... Did we really use 14,000 pounds to get up here? That sounds excessive. 14,000 pounds. Because I think we had 14,000... No, we didn't. We had 11 four aside, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had 21,000 pounds. So we had 11 four aside. So that's 16 fours left. We had 11 400 aside. So that was uh, 22,800 minus 16,400. That is uh, 6,400 pounds of fuel. It took us to go from FJ Warner docks up to the military base to do an approach to come into land. So we used 6,400 pounds. Uh, if we divide that by 7, that gives us 914 gallons. Uh, let's see what gallons to liters is. So nine, it's about three, almost four. So that's uh, 3,400 liters. So that's actually not bad for an aircraft of this size. I, I want this to use a good fair bit of fuel, so you have to decide, you know, am I really taking out Proteus to go do a uh, short mission, but I also want it fuel efficient enough that it's realistic and usable. So uh, it appears we're getting pretty good numbers on that. So let's go ahead, let's do two, let's do three. Uh, I'll do a better job of taxiing in. That was my, mainly me not paying attention here. So let's go. Props are. Let's decrease the props. After redo the props, manifold pressure is higher when you are at low prop pitch settings, um, and then it decreases as you go as you change. So I have to kind of fake that because it's backwards. So I have to come up with a formula. I'm not thrilled with the click on the um, throttles. Really not. It's not my favorite at all, um, but I can, you know what, if it bothers me too much, you know, a lot of people seem to be annoyed by that, so, you know, I think the devs, devs have been receptive to the community, we just need to put them in the appropriate place, we need to have a um, feature request bug tracker report, and um, people need to support it, and that's how we're going to get it, so let's come back on the thrust here, or I will spin too fast around. Yeah, I'm really not liking that click, clicking nonsense on the throttles. So I might go in the XML and try to get rid of it. It's, it's, uh, that is annoying. A lot of people have been saying that's annoying, and, and I would agree. Throttles are very quiet. You don't hear them. You know, they're just sliding. They generally, something this, you know, they're either fly by wire now, which have, um, I think they must, I wonder if they use potentiometers or what they use, or if they just use, uh, you know, I'm trying to think how they would use them now. Um, you know, I don't, probably not a potentiometer. I'm not sure, but they, uh, you know, old school, they were, you were actually pulling a cable. So you'd have, you know, essentially a pivoted lever, and then you had a cable on it, and that was how you did it. So let's, um, I'm going to bring the thrust back a little bit here. I need to line this right up, and then I'm going to tap the fates here and do this. All right, I do need to make this so that I can um, tow it. And so I have to decide how I want to do that. You know, when I had the dual tail wheels on there, um, I could put a connector between them, and that was ideal to be able to tow it by its tail wheel. Um, but I need to come up with a better system. Um, there are, you know, a lot of old... old or aircraft, um, even some modern aircraft, they don't have steering, in this case the tail wheel or the nose wheel. What they'll do is they'll do differential braking. And so as you go, you know, you each of your rudder pedals also has your brake for that, um, for that side. So the rudder pedals go forward and back, and they also tip, uh, pivot. And so that's your brakes. And so what you can control is you can control your, um, you know, your left rudder pedal would control your left side brakes. And your right um, rudder pedal would control the right side brakes. So you could do differential braking as well. And so something like, you know, 
if you have multiple engines, like I could come up on that starboard engine to help me turn, and I could also tap that uh, port brake and turn very tight. So what I'm going to probably do is make it so that when my when my rudder is or you know when my yaw controls essentially are more than 90 percent it will add brake and so what I'll do is try to think how I'll do it because essentially I wanted to do uh, you know maybe maybe I'm trying to think how to do it best Because, you know, generally on the ground, you're not going to be doing full uh, rudder, even in most cases, you're not going to be doing full rudder, so. Let's go ahead and stop here. Again, the throttle clicking is already bugging me, so. The engine sounds sound good to me so far, but I haven't, of course, tested them all. Oh, I had the brake on the whole time. So, as you see, that's plenty of power to get through there. I'm going to regrip these tires, too. Okay, so let's do a quick shutdown procedure just to, you know, practice. Okay, that's good, and then we'll just do mass power avionics. All right, so that was a better way to do it. So um, I need to make sure that I put some fuel in this base. So let's double check this. Let's save really quick. Um, we're not gonna save the same save because I'm afraid if we try to spawn it in here, it might have issues. So let's go like that. That way we know we have a clean working save. We're putting away, uh, what's that, 16? 16,900 uh, and change, so almost um, 1,700, 17,000 pounds of fuel. Where's my this? So, uh, what's that? Divide by 21, essentially. Something like that. No, that wouldn't be right. It would be divided by 7. So about, I don't know, 2.5. About two and a half, uh, so 2,500 gallons times three, so you're talking six, 7,500 liters, something like that. Just quick mental arithmetic off. Why Why can't I grab you? Oh, I have to do it this way. I forgot. So this is not letting me grab it in the base. Why? I bought this base. I definitely bought this base. Where is the grab point for this? Very interesting that I can't grab this. Here. I think it usually actually spawns up closer. So let me move forward. All right. So I think it actually does spawn closer usually. How's my electricity doing? A little bit low here. But burn, you know, burn up electricity a little bit here. Let's go ahead and actually take the break off this time. Yeah, I, I'm really disliking that clicking noise in the throttle. One thing I think the devs could do to save a lot of headache for themselves is a lot of a lot of life is covering CYA cover your ass, and they could do some some reasonable um, cover your ass stuff by by saying hey you know you know I know they used to have test branch and stuff and that can be a pain because you know you, you're relying on the community to be effective testers. And that could be problematic, but what's better is to say, hey, we're going to come out with the, um, you know, of course they could have beta versions of the game, which would be nice. Um, so you can roll back saves or whatever, uh, roll back versions or whatever. But one thing they could do that I think would be reasonably easy is, you know, put out a feature and say, hey, you know, this is going to be the uh, testing phase of this feature. And they... You know, ideally, you would say you could roll your save, you could roll your um, version back to before that, but say, hey, you know, this is the alpha version of this update. So, hey, guys, this is the alpha version of the sound update. And so, when everybody gets annoyed, you go, oh, thanks for, you know, thanks for voicing, you know, your um, your opinions on the on the alpha update. You know, we'll uh, take that into consideration as we finish, you know, as we put the uh, update into full release. And so what that tells people is, you know, and, and it's it's a lot of it's a semantics game, but it tells people, there we go. Okay, yeah, so the it, if you notice when you spawn something in this hangar, it actually puts it toward the end, that end of the hangar, so that would be why. So let's go ahead and do a little work. So anyways, what I was saying is, you know, instead of saying, hey, the audio update is out, say, hey, the audio update is in open beta, you know. And so now people come in and say, you know, we hate this, we hate this, we love this, we love, like, 
Um, so what I've seen from reading the you know things with the community is people love the sound block, which I haven't worked with at all yet. People love the sound block a lot. There are some people who like the new engines. So far, I'm liking them. They sound good for me. Um, a lot of people really hate the new prop sound for the water propellers. And so I haven't yet to test that out, so I have no opinion on it. And so by calling this the beta, you know, update, um, you know, saying this update isn't beta, you can, as the devs, you can say, oh, don't worry about it. You know, this, we're taking feedback. And so this is the feedback period because they do this anyway, but they're not covering their asses. And so it makes them look bad. So if they said, hey, this is the beta version of the audio update, let us know what you think. You know, even when it, they don't say that, we're going to let them know what we think in the bug tracker, which is where it should be, not anywhere, you know, putting it anywhere else is just yelling at the ether again. But that lets them uh, kind of have a little bit of cover to say, yep, yeah, this is beta. You, you know, this is the beta version of it. You know, we're happy to hear everybody's thoughts on it. And then as people say, I hate the clicking of the throttles, they go, listen, we're hearing a ton of backlash. The clicking of the throttles is annoying people. They want those quiet throttles back. All they have to do is say, yep, revert, throttle, click. And then, you know, after a couple weeks or a week, you know, they could say, you know, even, even add it to next week's update, say, hey, you know, we heard a lot from the community that the clicking throttles was uh, really annoying people. Thank you for all the feedback. We really appreciate it. So we've decided we're going to roll back the click and throttle. We're still um, getting some more feedback for other features and other items of the audio update. Um, this will help us get to full release of that update. It's a better way to do it. It covers them a little bit better. And I think it's a much more reasonable way to do it. So I wish they would do that. That would be, uh, I think that would be beneficial for them. All right. So that's end of end of that little thought rant, or whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's uh, see what I want to work on here first. So um, let's do this. I think this is all up to save because I just launched it anyway. Let's grab Sibley. The nice thing about being in the biggest hangar is, uh, is let me make sure this is the, the most updated version too. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I think I named it. The named version is the most updated. Yes, it is. Okay, I just want to 100% be sure. All right, so I'm not going to do a ton of building. Um, you know, I'm trying to come up with my new process of having building in the career build series. There's still going to be building. Some people were worried there's not going to be building. There absolutely is still going to be a lot of building in the career build series. I'm just trying not to have those long stretches where it's all building for two weeks, you know? Like... Um, you know, pretty much when I made the excavator and the front end loader, it was like two weeks of straight building, very little, um, you know, actual mission gameplay. And so I kind of want to make sure I'm not doing that where it uh, feels like just solid weeks, you know, week or more of building that I kind of have a little bit of a, uh, you know, have a little bit of a balance. And so that's what that's going to be. That's kind of the notion that I have. So if you notice, uh, this is one wider than the um, other. Um, is one wider than Sibley's upper deck. I'm trying to see. I might redo some upper deck stuff here. So it feels a little claustrophobic in here. I kind of want that. Let me try to find some pics of what I'm thinking here. Uh, So I'm looking for the Antonov 124's interior. I used to see the 124 IRL at uh, Raleigh Durham. They had um, they had they had a couple there for a cargo company. So this here is the upper deck for the Antonov 124. Now the Antonov 124 is much larger than um, Proteus. So yes, we expect this to be large, but as you can see, it has a you know it has the curvature here because if we look at the exterior of the Antonov 124, which I love the Antonov 124, it's one of my favorite planes of all time. So if we look at the top of the 124, you can see this section here is the upper deck. It kind of it kind of has that same um, you know. Um, what do you call it? Proteus was, you know, inspired somewhat by the shape of how you have that 
more narrow upper deck, and then you have the fatter cargo section. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm working with here. I'm, my, I want to kind of maybe flatten the roof and do a little bit more space. So let's see. Um, one of the things here is, so you notice we're one block wider. That will give us a little bit uh, more spacious feeling. I might be able to do two and one. So two seats on one side, one on the other. So I'm kind of kind of interested what I can do here. So, uh, you know, I'd have to come to the cockpit, which the cockpit tends to narrow out because you're going into the skinniest part when you come towards the nose. But I'm just going to do a little sp spot here so I can feel it. Kind of see what up, what's up here. So that's going to ruin the curve there. I th see, the problem is doing it in the wing route's tough. So I have to get out of the wing route. The wing route kind of has to be where it, the way it is. You know, I can fix it, but let's come back here. So let's kind of see if what I think of this here. So let's do that. So let's try. So I'm trying to think, how can I do this without screwing up the general shape? Probably I can't too much. Yeah, I really can't. Okay, I'm not. I'm not displeased with. That. I was just kind of uh, thinking about it. You know, even if I put windows in, I can't do windows with this slope again. If they gave us more window spots, but I couldn't even do windows till the back here anyway. So I'm not going to worry about windows. Uh, the wing route's pretty forward here. This I'm going to fix, as you can see here. Um, that's going to be fixed with some XML blocks. So I'll do that uh, later. That doesn't need to be done right now. Uh, we get these seats in. So I should be able to, um, where's three? One, two, three, three. So I should be able to fit these against the wall, I'm thinking. But yeah, I really like the Antonov 124. It's a, such a cool plane. What is this interacting with? What is it? Oh. Uh, I didn't grab the seats again. So you see all the seats are left in place. That's annoying. So yeah, I don't think I'm, I might not be able to get these against the wall, which kind of sucks, but let me see. They're going to have to go up one. The seat height is pretty high on these. So let's go grab that. I need to come up one to be able to grab the seats. Where, why am I still not having the seats? What is going on here with this? This one not merge. What the hell is going on here? I think I need to just come forward one. Yeah, that was, I just need to come forward one. Okay, so I have them. Let me see. I, I don't think I can get these up against the wall. Yeah, see, it's going to try to cut into these blocks here. Um, these are dead blocks. So I could make this work. Okay, I can make this worth, work with XML. So the first one we'll do extra seating, tend to have that in the bulkhead area. That's fine. That's going to go here. And then the reason is I'm going to do a stagger aisle. Yeah, I'm going to stagger the aisle. So let's go ahead and let's go. And then this is important and this can move. This was just here for, for now anyway. Um, that's my main breaker. That's the master power breaker right there. So, all right, let's go. All right, good. And let's go ahead and so I'll fix that with XML. As you see, that's um, crap. That's going to go into the wing, isn't it? Hmm. So let's not do that, actually. That's all right. Um, let's go. Let's move this back again. Yeah, I you know, I it wouldn't be a big deal. I'd lose a little bit of fuel capacity, but I don't know what I want to do yet. I might I don't really need a ton of seats in there. I have plenty of seats, I have plenty of room. Um I'll just put like armrests in there essentially, kind of beef up the seats a little bit. Uh they just need to move forward a little bit here, so Oh come on man. This grab sometimes doesn't want to grab properly. There we go. Doesn't want to grab properly sometimes, and it's a little frustrating. All right, so that's the seats. Let's go ahead and just move them up a little bit. So these just need to go. I'm going to move them right up to the end of the cockpit there with just a little bit extra gap for the bulkhead. 
Okay, so that's more than enough seats here. What do we have? One, two, three, five. But that's ten seats in there, so that's fine. So what I just need to do here is I want to do uh, kind of armrest here. That doesn't make a very comfortable armrest, does it? Um, let me see. Try to find something to make an armrest out of. I might just make it out of a microcontroller. Probably just do a microcontroller, I'm thinking. So let's do like that. Symmetry on? No, symmetry's not on. All right, let's just do that. So just put an armrest on this side here. So this will be a little bit, add a little bit more comfort for people. They'll have a armrest they can use. There we go. Just give them a little bit more comfort there. I don't know how, if I like that at all or not. Um, I have another thought on this here. Let's go. Oh my God, I'm stuck in the wall. My hands were in the wrong keys, so it was, uh, couldn't get off of it. So this needs to come up like that, and then I need... Hmm. I'm trying to see what if there's some block for make a good armrest. I won't spend too much time on this. this is kind of the more boring little detailing work that um, isn't all that fun. I'm just kind of trying to come up with some solution for it. All right, let's do this. I'm going to start it and then I will finish it later when I kind of uh, determine how I want it. So let's go ahead and let's just grab this really quick. Let's go. So that looks like, you know, a softer, more comfortable armrest there. I don't know. We'll see if I like it if I don't. And then we'll do... A wedge like that. Do a wedge like this instead. That's a little bit better, I think. You know, I'm just trying to integrate it into the seat so that it looks good. So that's pretty good. That's uh, not a bad armrest. Uh, you know, it fills in the space and it also makes the seats look a little bit more comfortable. So I like that. So let's go ahead and... Copy that. Yeah, so this, you know, just gets them so they look like they belong there instead of having a weird funky gap. Like you see, the funky gap doesn't make any sense. This just looks like they're bigger seats that you know, require that armrest. You know, I'll probably tweak it a little bit later, but again, I, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. I want to move on you know i want to kind of as i build this you know as i um finish it more in the build series i want to kind of try to again i'm trying to develop a little bit better balance so i'm trying to balance functionality with aesthetics and get it so that you know this stays functional in the build series while also you know looking better so kind of feeling a little bit better so part of the functionality is adding some seating here so that we can um, do rescues you know I want to get this to the point where it can uh, it could do everything that we would want it to do in game and I haven't decided how I want to do the bulkheads yet I 
you know, it'd be nice to have just open bulkheads, but I, uh, they look unfinished. So that's good there. That check and make sure I seal up my wings and everything. It's important so that I can actually do that. And then that goes beautiful. All right. And then let's cut in our bulkhead. This trying to figure out a bulkhead door shape has been kind of obnoxious for me. I think I might go with um, square. I do have to duck, though, if it's like that. So, Let's go like this. Oh, come on. Behave yourself just for a second there. Let's go like that. I don't like it as much, um, but um, that will make it so I don't have to duck. I don't know. Let's... I could XML edit something in there as well, but all right, let's go ahead. See, part of the thing I don't like is that color, so let's do this for now. Kind of make a see that looks better already. Um, just a little bit of contrast, kind of the door frame, so that's good. So that's my bulkhead there. Nice. That kind of demarcates the space. All right. So what do I want to do next? Um, I'm thinking I was going to initially put, you know, med up there. I might do it down here. I don't know. I'm also trying to think how can I can do like a bed space on one side. The problem is the the roof line is really just so low that it's tough to do that. Yeah, the, the roof line's so low that it's tough for me to because, like, see, if I wanted to do, I could do a bed right here, and then I could do a door here, and kind of have you have to walk on this side, but I'd have to see. So let's try something here. So let's go symmetry off. Let's just do pinky blocks. And then let's say I put the wall here to put the bed behind the wall. Like so. All right, and then, so let's, I'm going to, so the whole point is I'm going to come down this hallway. I'm going to try to walk past this door. Let me just try to see if I can even get a sliding door in here because sliding door is all that's going to work. So I kind of want a couple, you know, at least a bedroom um, that, I want at least, you know, a bedroom that I can put in here. So I can cut this in right here. So let me cut it in and then we'll see. Okay, see, it's, that's annoying too, but. Not too bad. Those are two by wedges. So the other thing I could do to try see the problem is when you do too many of these half blocks by themselves, um, like if you do a set of three of them, it looks very angular. Gives me a little bit more uh, roof clearance, but I'm not thrilled with the way it looks. So let me kind of oh, let me play with this idea. Again, I don't want this to take forever. I want to kind of get up and do something and. I want to get a flight in. I'd like to get up, us up and land at sea. So this actually has to go there. All right, so let's go where uh, bed. So I'm just doing a quick test here, and we'll see how this functions, see how this feels. This would be cool to have a couple little um, sleeping quarters off the side like that. See, I can probably do this pretty efficiently space-wise. I just need to see how it, how it feels as I walk down the hallway. Like, see that little cubicle there looks pretty good to me. And so I'm just I'm just coloring it, kind of see if it feels like it's you know this it uh, feels like it should be in that space. So let's go ahead and we'll test this. Yeah, and a lot of this is feel, but that looks pretty damn good, man. So you you'll you'll jog into this side of the hall a little bit. So I just need to see if I'm hitting my head. Or if it feels natural. It actually looks damn natural to me. So like here. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is awesome. That is really good. And then we're just going to do the locking cockpit door. And then you actually do have a place to sleep. You can get up out of bed. That's awesome. So this little cubicle is actually pretty good right now. Um, so what I might do is actually. I think I'm going to leave it right where it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it right where it is, and then I can put something here, um, put something here, and then I have, so see, it also, it kind of demarcates the space, 
and it uh, does a good job of demarcating the space. See, like even I could, I could probably even go one wider. Let's try one wider. I can still feel, I still feel comfortable walking up against this wall. Um, the problem is I lose my light if I do that. I'm actually, I'm kind of happy with it, the size it is. It's pretty much just get in the bed and get out. So that's pretty cool. So let's kind of um, let's finish that up, and then um, I did want to do that mission. So let's. Um, Try to kind of. I don't like the space because of where the light is. So let's un. Oh, I can't undo it now. Um, that's fine. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete this out. And then what can I? I can cut. I think I have to cut this. I could cut it two at a time. Okay. Just kind of seeing where I can cut this and not have it. Uh, I have to rebuild my my exterior wall. But that's good. That um. You know, I wanted to be able to have some sleeping quarters in here, so I can do these as half, um, this kind of half walls. So that's really awesome. All right, good. So that's good. Let's rebuild this wall really quick here. All right, and then I'm going to do it. The light's the only thing. I have the light spaced, and so I took time to space the lights. So I don't want to screw that up. So let's go quick measurement here. That is 17 between, so we're talking nine is the center right there. Okay, so nine's the center right there. So we'll just do zing and then that's like that. All right, good. So what's the width of a door? I don't want sliding door electric. Let's go ahead and let's do this color here. Try not to make this take too long here. All right, so I'm gonna have to slide this around here, see where I'm at. So let's see the width of this. A one, two, three looks like six. Of course, it's an even number. I tend to like it when it's odd numbers. So what I'll do here is I will add a block that'll make it seven. Now that's an odd number. All right. And I'm actually going to probably need to do that anyway, because where's the bed? So we have our bed here. I'm going to keep that white. So this will go like this. And then, so, yep, so that's going to have to go two more. So that's going to be, was it nine? Nine wide for my living quarters here. And I'm going to try putting it in the middle. Give me a little bit more bed space. Um, where was where was that? So this is the center here. So let's find the center of this. So we have, was it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Yep. So one, two, three, four, five. So this door corner here is where I need my center. So again, you know, it, it pays off. It just looks right when things are centered properly and then they're not off the lights incorrectly. So what is it? It's right here on this corner of the door. So let's cut this. Let's move it till that door corner is right on the center piece. So right there. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and merge this. Go ahead and we'll actually, I'm going to delete the bed. And I want this brown here for the, for the most of the bed frame is going to be that. The sheets, of course, will be a different color. And so that needs to be, what I'll do is I could put that up in there and then put some cubbies. I know I can't put cubbies there because of the space. So I'm trying to think how to do this and not cause myself grief. It's just, I'm, again, I don't want to spend too much time on this. So I'm just going to dump it for right now. And then let's go ahead and put this in. So again, this feels like I'm getting something completed and that it's going to be cool and utilitarian. You know, this will allow me to leave, especially because this this craft is very large and can only launch from certain places. I need to be able to sleep in a bed to get new missions. So, All right, so that's up and in there. And then I think I do want to do, let me try some angle integration in here. I like that better, a little bit of less uh, 
you know, less angular there. Put a little bit of smoothing on there. There we go. So that's our little uh, sleep cubicle. Have some space. Put some stuff in here. Bed in there. I didn't know you could... Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could do each uh, layer like that. So that's like the curve over of the fold. Um, that's the sheets. And then this is... We'll do sh sheets like that. And then we'll, that's that looks pretty cool. I I like to be able to go up one because I could do the um. I see what I'll do is I'll XML edit in some uh, half blocks so that that looks contiguous, and then I could put under bed storage like I had. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We're getting a little close on time here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to. Grab some first aid kits here. Uh, that should be good. Defib. And then I will, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put storage and cubbies and a galley and all sorts of stuff in here later. I'm just trying to get us enough that we can get a mission done. All right, let's save this again. I'm making lots of saves for um, Proteus. Interior decorating, all right. All right, let's spawn. Um, so was there anything, let me look really quick at my drive where I put on some of the things that I needed for Proteus. Uh, let's see, gear position and transit, star main is coming in and out, that's fixed. Add needle, okay, so there's nothing in there that's really critical that I need. I'm gonna do one more save just to double check. All right, let's go ahead and spawn this. Let's go to this mission. So let's grab, um, we'll set the course. So it is, uh, we'll read the mission. Riverboat is an emergency. Um, so most likely, I don't know if, it's not a repair, so I don't need repairs because I don't have a torch on the air. Search the area and locate the emergency. So likely it could, very, it could be there, but likely it's going to be in this waterway here and we're going to land in there. So I wanted to get a sea landing in. Uh, kind of show you how all well this operates in and out of the water. And then that will be the end of it. So uh, that will that makes a uh, nice little balance there of some building and some, um, you know, doing some rescues as well. So let's go ahead and... So next, you know, I, uh, I copied over uh, Sibley's interior here. So next time I'm gonna make it so I don't have to duck for these doors. Um, these are ceiling doors. I don't. I doubt I need ceiling doors up top. So see, I like this. This is good use of space in here. I still don't feel too claustrophobic. It's it's in between the lights, so this light lights this space. This light lights this space. This one lights all of this. Bedroom feels good. I like to move the bed up one, so I'll probably XML edit in a. Um, a block in there so I can go up one. Uh, because you don't have the collision if you do that. So, all right, let's go ahead. Ooh, let's do, be doing a little no clip in here. I didn't open the hangar doors. So, all right. So, I'm still trying to decide if I want reversing props or not and how I'm going to do it. So, that's something on the thought list. What's our fuel? Um, okay, we need to start that cross feed right away. I'm going to start up all uh, the outboards here. Go beacon on. Beacon should have come on already, but cross feed's going pretty quick. So let's go ahead and let's start, uh, start advancing the prop. Again, I need to set that, so that's probably my minimum prop set in there, but uh, that'll be something I do later. Okay, we're good. So this will be, oh, yeah, this will be the first time we also kind of get us, um, or I get a feeling of how these new sounds are. Let's go ahead and set our course. Um, I did not pull one in. I did not pull one in. Oh, my God. Can I figure out the keys? There we go. What is it doing, man? All right. It, 
wouldn't let me put a waypoint if I had that up. So it, it was still think of the mouse needed to click on that to be able to operate. So that's fine. All right, so the uh, runway heading, we, you always want to put your runway heading in, 210. Um, we're going to go up to 5,000 feet. All right, we're going south so we can pick uh, even or odd altitude. Generally, it's east is least, so you do odd easts and you do even um, wests. All right, so taxiing out here. Uh, we're getting close to the runway, so let's go ahead. I'll contact ground. Ah, uh, ground cap one two three is uh, ready to taxi. We're going to be heading down to the air biome. Uh, cap one two three, uh, t go ahead and taxi to runway two one and hold short two one. Uh, taxi two one, hold short. All right, so we're getting those engines start up. I'm going to change the way the engines start too. I kind of want them to take a little bit longer. I have uh, the clutch doesn't come in until they're already started, so I'm going to change that. I want to keep them full clutched. Um, I want them to, you know, they're big, heavy engines. I want them to take a second to start. Don't like the click on the throttle. Very annoying to me. I can't play one, two, three. Switch over to tower. Uh, over to tower. Can't play one, two, three. Uh, tower. Can't play one, two, three. We're ready. Uh, cap light one two three. You're clear for takeoff runway two one. Uh, climb maintain or uh, uh, head two one zero. Climb maintain five thousand feet. Uh, clear for takeoff runway two one. Climb uh, head does uh, two one zero. Uh, climb maintain five thousand feet. Cap flight one two three. All right, here we go. We're ready. Set prop. Prop set set flaps. We didn't do our checklist before, but. All right, uh, for takeoff checklist, flap set, prop set, lights are on. Uh, for takeoff checklist complete, what am I hitting? Oh, I'm off. I'm off a little bit here. I forget I'm a tail dragger. If I was uh, had a nose wheel steering, we'd be perfect. So that was what it was there. What is on my tail? Oh, the logo lights. I'm going to put a design on the tail. I uh, forgot something. Tail fold. Let's check the fuel. Fifteen, five up. I screwed it up. Knew I was gonna do it. Yeah, cap light. Can we switch that uh, to a position and hold? Uh that's approved. Uh, cap light one two three. Uh, position hold runway two one. Uh, position hold two one. Uh, cap light one two three. Thanks. And that's because I overdid the fuel. Um, fuel balance. I could automate it. I don't want to automate it. You know, it's, um, again, that's something that it's it's a job I need to do myself. But it gives me something to do. I, mean, I You know, when I do the grip on the tires, that should fix us from moving when I have the parking brake on. Not good. Cross speeds off. All right, we're ready to go. Uh, cap light one two three, we're ready. Uh, cap light one two three. Uh, clear for takeoff. Uh, head uh, heading two one zero. Climb maintain five thousand. Uh, clear for takeoff two one zero and uh, climb maintain five thousand feet. Cap light one two three. All right, here we go. Fog's coming in. Pause. Right, gear up. Here's coming up. Uh, over 100 knots. Let's go. Flaps up. Flaps coming up. Now setting prop for climb. Climb checklist. Cycle the gear. That tailwheel's giving me problems. Uh, I'll go ahead and set the autopilot again. This is one of the reasons why you set it all up before you take off. I'm by myself, you know, in actuality, so I can do this. That tail wheel is giving me issues. I have to continually fix that, so that's on my big to-do list here. Let me, uh, I will fix that. If I get to my screen, I can uh, fix that. Yep, that goes under gear. All right. Tailwheels being a mess. 
Uh, cap flight one, two, three. You can uh, switch over to uh, military base departure and uh, head direct to the arid biome. Uh, direct the arid biome, we'll switch over to uh, military uh, departure. Thanks. All right, so let's go ahead and let's head to, um, I didn't do heading hold or altitude hold. That's not good. I should have pre-selected those. And then I can just turn on the autopilot master. Uh, can we do that climb checklist? Wait a sec. Uh, gear up, please. Tailwheel's misbehaving. All right, let's run with the tailwheel down. We can. Uh, we're just gonna lose some speed, but you know nothing bad's gonna happen. So uh, run that uh, climb checklist when you get a second. Uh, gear is noted. In transit up. Flaps are up. Uh, climb pitch. Climb uh, pitch is set. Climb check was clear. Climb check was clear. Thank you. And I'm going to monitor my RPMs. My props should be static. And my temps. Let's check our uh, distance is 13 miles. Uh, it's going to be 5 minutes. I'm going to add the decimals back in there. I put a floor on there, but I need more so I have some decimal. Um, I need the next decimal place over, essentially. I, uh, you know, I, it was giving me like a thousand decimal places, so I... I just put a quick floor on there so it wouldn't do that. Uh, 4,000 for 5,000. You want to call your altitude out 1,000 feet before. Um, we actually had what was called a train horn. It sounded like a train horn. It went toot. And uh, that would announce to us that it was 1,000 feet um, before. You know, you want to check that to make sure the autopilot actually levels you off and it behaves itself. So, I think I know why the gear, the tailwheel screwing up. Uh, so for my mains, I have hardpoint locks locking them in the down position. I need to make them so that they, um, I need to make them longer because they don't want to rotate out of that hardpoint. Um, you know, you kind of, if you make them longer, they'll rotate a little bit more effectively. So I need to fix that. All right, 5,000 feet. All right, uh, switching to cruise prop. Yeah, I'm bringing the thrust down. So see, we hit about 180 for a second there. I'm gonna set my cruise thrust. I want more than that. About 160 knots, good. Uh, when you get a second cruise or uh, climb checklist, should have been landing light off as well. All uh, right, when you get a second cruise checklist, uh, prop set, thrust set, cruise checklist complete. Cruise checklist complete. Thank you. All right, we're four minutes out, so we're doing about uh, better. We're doing, what are we doing here? We're doing about um, two and a half miles per minute, so we need to descend. So let's go ahead and start descending. Go down to uh, 1,000 feet. We have some mountains down there. 1,000 uh, set, 1,000 set. All right, and we're going to go ahead and we start reducing our thrust here. You know, this is how fast things happen. You know, we took off from here. We're going only to here. Um, the aircraft's pretty... What is this? What is that? Four, four, bearing 4-4? Four, four? Did I not set it in? I never set it in. Okay. Remember I had that issue where I was trying to set it in. I went to the map. I never set it in. So we're not heading the right direction. So that's fine. There's distance 10 miles. Let's go ahead and I'm going to thrust back up. We're going to speed back up here. I'm liking the new engine sounds on this plane. They sound good. You know, again, my thought, I I was in a Reddit conversation about this, but a lot of people are hating the new engine sounds, and a lot of people are liking the new engine sounds. A lot of people were like, I thought they said they got rid of the lawnmower. It still sounds like a lawnmower. Um, in my experience, the way, you know, because things are bigger in game, for example, let's say trucks, right? My Mac Pinnacle is much larger, so we're just a nine mile, three minutes. I'm going to go ahead and slow back down. We're still descending down to, we're descending very slowly. I need to probably, I need to change the VSI on there to go down a little slow, a little bit faster. We're not moving. I don't know, maybe we're doing, we could be doing 1,100 feet per Per, you know, that's 11 feet per second. Ooh, I might have to talk to Sky, see how I can change that to feet per minute. What's my vertical speed reading? 
I can't, this is not indexed, so I can't tell, but that's probably a thousand there, I don't know. It was 11 feet per second, I'm 60, so we're talking 660, yeah, that's, that's low. I need to change that so I get better uh, descent rate. I want about 1,500 feet per minute. So, um, anyways, talking about in Reddit, a lot of pe some people are satisfied with the new engine sound. Some people are dissatisfied with the engine sound. Some people are like, oh, it's still making the lawnmower noise. In my experience, in my estimation, uh, part of it's because of the size of wheels and everything else. The wheel diameter is probably double what it would be in real life. And so you need to understand your wheel is your final gear. And so, like, for example, the Mac Pinnacle. I have the Mac Pinnacle set up. It, the speeds are, with, are within one mile an hour of the real tractor. The gear ratios are within .02 of the real tractor. And it sounds perfect to me. But the RPMs shown in game, the RPS, which I convert to RPM, are about half of what they should be. And so I actually use a formula to just pretty much double them. They're about 45% of what they should be. And so in my estimation, because the the wheels in game are larger, because, you know, everything's, you know, the smallest unit we can have is, you know, a quarter of a meter. Um, you know, your wheel is your final gear, essentially. And so with that, um, I'm going to change my heading here. Uh, what's my heading currently? Bearing is 199. I'm going to change this to 199. I'm going to switch over to heading mode here. Yeah, we'll take off bearing. All right. Um, and so, in my estimation, people are trying to run at realistic RPMs or RPSs, and they should be about half. If you, if you run your RPMs half because of the larger wheel diameter, you think about it this way. Let's say a wheel is one meter around, right? You cut it, you lay it flat. So, for every one rotation, you're going one meter forward. So, if you're rotating at... 10 meters per second, right? Um, if, if, you're, if your RPM, let's say your RPS is 10, right? That's 10 meters per second, that's 20 miles an hour, right? If you doubled the diameter of the wheel, which are, again, our, the diameters of our wheel in game are too big in my estimation, or bigger than normal, let's put it that way. Now let's say it's two meters. If you're still, if you still have an RPS of 10, now you're going 20 meters per second. You're actually going double the speed. So you need to cut the RPS in half to be able to get realistic performance in game. That also has the benefit of decreasing your temperatures. It also has the benefit of decreasing the sound and how lawnmowery it is. So what I recommend is upscale your engines, make your engines bigger, decrease the RPS down about 50%. I actually do about 45%. And then, if you want to have a realistic tachometer, you want to then do a formula to increase the tachometer. Um, you know, the devs could do this by, you know, do this in the coding, but they're not going to. Um, you know, they break too much stuff. Again, they're not making big changes because they will destroy everything on the workshop. That would be hugely detrimental to the game. They're not going to do it. And I'm going to just decrease the fog a little. We're super fogged in. Like, right, let me just make it so I can see. There we go. All right, so we're looking for this craft already here. We are coming up. If we look here on the map, we are... I, I don't want to see it, but I can tell by the ground. So let's do this as well. Let's get rid of map vehicles. So we are here. Again, I can tell by the bridge. So we're looking for this vehicle. It is... Um, oh, the, the mission went away. you got to be kidding me. The mission went away. Huh, what is this dude here? Blue pickup truck. We're not doing that. All right, so let's go ahead and land in here. This mission went away. I took too long. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll land in this gully. But, um, yeah, so so far, you know, the clicking I hate. I really don't like that at all. Um, the engine sounds so far are good to me, but uh, we could fix that. All right, I need to do some quick stuff. So gear's coming down. Flaps are going there. I'm not going to worry about checklists. I'm going to do it myself. Let's go ahead and we'll bring it back down to landing. We're going to land in that in that river there. I'm just going to consult the map, so it would be like if I had a sectional on my lap, we're uh, leveling off at 1,000 feet. 2,000 for 1,000, I missed the call. Uh, we're going to come back around, we'll land going, I don't know where the wind is. Whoop, 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 whoop. Power, 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 power. Remember, we leveled off, and I didn't increase power. Uh, let's go ahead and autopilot off. Very dangerous, that. Oh, come on, give me flaps there. Ding dong. 
I'm gonna dip my wings so I can see a little bit better. We'll land straight ahead here. Video's getting on time, so. All right, uh, gear should be up. I'm trying to get that tailwheel to cycle up. It's not, so. I could have broken an electrical connection. So you see, we can get really slow on this. We could land at probably like 50. We have full flaps in here. So we're gonna land with the tailwheel. Um, especially see, we're gonna settle our tail in a little bit first. Um, you know, that could cause a lot of drag in real life, but I don't think it's, we don't really have to worry about it in game. So we're actually going in, we have a little bit of a left crosswind if you look at the streamers in the water, the white parts. You can see that. I hate the click. Oh my god, I hate the click. Alright, and we're down. Wow, I hate the click. It's awful. Alright, let's go ahead and go in. So that, that was a fun little mission, a little bit of a combo of, um, you know, some, a uh, little bit of building, a little bit of work um, here. As you can see, it sits really nicely in the water. Next episode, we'll take off from the water, and we'll head to a land base. I would kind of like to pick the, the bubble turret up off the ground, up out of the water a little bit, but I'm not going to do that. I like having my big, that's a realistic size rudder. Um, yeah, it is kind of a little cool that it dips in the water there, but you wouldn't want that easily break the glass. But see, it lands nicely. Um, you know, this this is nice. I can get it down at a really slow speed. Forty is pretty damn low. We were stalling. It felt to me like a real stall. You know, as much as people give give them crap about the um, aerodynamics in game. Let me kill the engine so we're not listening to them. Um, as much as people give them crap for the aerodynamics. It gave me that very visceral um, feeling of stalling in real life. And I immediately, it was like, oh, 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 oh. like I could feel it, like the sink rate of the plane was sinking underneath me. And I quickly added power and we we're good, you know, and it, um, you know, so it feels good to me. You see, we are starting to weather vane in the wind, so that's good. So let's go ahead and let's save this up. And... So we are all set here. This I think this was a good episode. Kind of play with some more. I've learned some more stuff. This needs tail wheel needs some work. Um, we need to figure out what the hell's wrong with that tail wheel. Um, you know, but that's the main thing. Uh, add a needle. I need to do finish some of the interior designing. Uh, Would have been cool to do that mission, but we we're running on time anyway. So um, as you can see, this is going to be really cool being able to land in these little basins between the islands. Uh, we can do sea rescues, we can do land rescues, um, we can haul cargo containers, we'll be able to haul vehicles, so this is going to be a really fun vehicle, it's, uh, it's doing most of the things I want already, I just need to, uh, do some tweaks here and there, and as I figure out more of what I want to do, uh, we can do that, let's check our, yep, see, we're, we're making plenty of electricity, I'll, I will add an APU at some point, and that will allow me to be able to, um, you know, for sitting in the water or sitting somewhere for long periods of time, kick on the APU and have it uh, top off our batteries. All right, so uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.